Well, welcome in the precious name of Jesus to the Ignited Mentoring Series. My name is Robert Pears. You know, in this hour, it is so essential that we make the right decision. I don't know about you, but I've often faced a lot of challenges. Do I say yes to this, no to that? Do I choose this job, do I not? Do I buy this, do I not? And those challenges, the pressure that's on you, you can look at the world's wisdom and you can put all the positives and the deltas and you still don't know what to do because there's so much at stake and the decision is so critical. It impacts not just you, but so many people and you don't know what to do. And nobody, you just wanna cast it on somebody else. Will somebody else make this decision for me? Well, I'm glad to tell you, there is somebody else. There is the living God who understands and knows all things, who has a perfect plan, who cares for you. And in this message, where I'm gonna share insight from Andrew Murray, a great man that I loved, on how through waiting on the living God, you can receive the wisdom and insight and instruction so that you do the right thing at the right time, the right way, and produce the right results. Amen. Join with me as we pray. Father, we just come in the name of Jesus by way of the blood. Holy Spirit, give us eyes to see, ears to hear, and a hearing heart. Open the word to us and speak to us. Give us revelation of what Jesus did for us and who we now are in Christ and how to lay hold of that, that we may be effective witnesses. Holy Spirit, I thank you for revelation knowledge of the word today, living. Let it be a fresh download to each person. Let it be living and real. Let it touch, change, transform, and bring the clarity that they need. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And the church said, Amen. Now, in Psalm 25, a Psalm of David, in verses 4 and 5, it says this. Make me know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. For you I wait all day. Teach me your ways. Teach me. What a thought to so appreciate the greatness of your God. To so humble yourself that we don't lean on, rely on us. In this hour, it's so easy for us to look at our natural skill set, all the things we've been taught and make a decision based on the natural, based on the flesh. But if we sow to the flesh, we reap death. I understand I've been trained in business, you know, and all those things, and we can make decisions that from the business perspective look perfect and fail because we don't see things from the fullest perspective. But when we get a hold of the living God, He has the perfect answer in every situation that so often may not be what we expect or what we think is right but his ways are perfect I love what Andrew Murray said here see how beautiful this comes out in Psalm 25 the writer knew and loved God's law exceedingly and meditated in that law day and night but he knew that this was not enough he knew that for the right spiritual apprehension of the truth and the right personal application of it to his own peculiar circumstances, he needed a direct divine teaching. It had to be personal. He had to come and seek the living God and say, God, in this situation, what do I do? You think about David and Joshua and how there were times they failed, but most of the time they succeeded. How did they succeed and how did they fail? Well, he's, David was anointed king. His job duties were to, pretend, to protect and defend Israel, to go to battle. We know that. But if he assumed that because that was his job title, he missed it. If there was any boasting in and going by the flesh, he missed it because his own flesh didn't have the strength of victory. And God will not give the glory to your flesh. God wants you to come in a place of humility, trusting in Him, in that weakness, in that surrender, in the yielding. There is a place of victory. So when David would come and say, Lord, will you give me the victory? God would. Same with Joshua. But when they somehow thought in themselves that they could just do. And they could take scriptures, they could stand on it, and they would fail. See, you can take scriptures to defend yourself and miss it. 
But in the secret place, you connect with the living God, not just scriptures, but the living word. And the living word speaks to you. So those verses now come forth with a clarity based on your circumstances by divine revelation. And you know exactly what to do. Your flesh may have a hissy fit, but you will do the thing that produces life and victory. In James 13, sorry, James 3, verses 14 and 18, or 14 through 18, James had earlier explained that if any of us lack wisdom, we would ask, and God would give it abundantly. So there's a wisdom, so we know what to do, what to do, how to do it, etc. But listen to this in verses 14 through 18 of chapter 3. The, this wisdom is not that which comes down from above, but is earthly, natural, demonic, for where jealousy and self-ambition exist, there is disorder in every evil thing. But the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceful, gentle, reasonable, full of mercy and good fruits, unwavering, without hypocrisy. And the seed whose fruit is, is righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. Because there's a heart character of heaven. And those that come and humble themselves in the secret place are not self-serving, are not building their own kingdom. They are people that flow with the peace of heaven. This wisdom demands a compliance with the heart of the Father. If you want to get the wisdom of heaven, that's why it requires the waiting, because we have to come and He has to come and do a work in us so that we end in compliance with Him, so that we are flowing with Him. Because we often, well, give me that, and we walk it out the wrong way. We walk it out in the wrong spirit and attitude, and it doesn't produce what heaven wants. But in the secret place of just simply humbling and waiting, something changes in us. Something does a work in us. Murray said, this psalm has at all times been a very peculiar one. Because of its reiterate, reiterated expression of the felt need of divine teaching and of the childlike confidence that that teaching would be given. Think about David. David recognizes, number one, that he has to come and seek the, the insight, the wisdom from above. I mean, do we even have the revelation? And I don't mean to be judgmental or critical, please hear my heart, but so often we overlook that and forget that. And we just assume and we wonder why we don't get the victory because we have to be retrained to understand we need the wisdom that's from above. And number two, we have to come in such a childlike expectancy that we come to the Father and He would give it to us. Murray went on to say, Study the psalm until your heart is filled with two thoughts, the absolute need, the absolute certainty of divine guidance. And these two, how entirely it is in connection that He speaks on thee do I wait all the day. Waiting for guidance, waiting for instruction all the day is a very blessed part of waiting upon God. We're so trained to be stimulated and to be doing. We want to just be running, and we need to be. We're told to occupy till He comes, to be busy doing what He's called us to do. But in the parallax of the kingdom, there is this constant doing as we're constantly waiting. Constantly seeking His face as a waiter, attending to Him, listening to Him, so that what we do is not in our own wisdom, understanding, or strength, but in His. Sold out, shown, and just doing the example that He, this, this place of such dependency that we are a co-worker constantly watching the Master show me what to do and how to do it. Murray went on to say, The Father in heaven, is so interested in his child and so longs to have his life at every step in his will and his love that he is willing to keep his guidance entirely in his own hand. He so wants to give you everything you need so that you walk this life out in his perfect will because it's perfect for you. It will never fail. It will never hurt. It will never damage. It will never destroy you. It will always lift you. It will always have you in the perfect place at the right time, doing the right thing that blesses not just you, but the world around you. It's so much bigger. And he's saying, if you'll just, just stay in this place, 
So as you will follow me, I will keep you right. I will keep you in the place where you're always the head and not the tail, coming above only and not beneath. He went on to say, and what is needed in us to receive this guidance? One thing, waiting for instructions, waiting on God. On thee do I wait all the day. We want in our times of prayer to give clear exp expression of our sense of need and our faith in his help. What a thought that we come and in our prayer life, there's such a, we always just bring out our prayer list and we focus on that. But what we don't do is take the time to fellowship and give him the time to do a work in us so that we end up in such compliance with his perfect will so that we're doing things the right way. We're not just getting the wisdom, but we're in a place to walk out that wisdom. We're in a place where he's given us the skills from his heart. So the answer that he gives, we can do accurately, perfectly, and produce the right results. See, it's not just good enough to hear the yes, but let me show you how. The guidance, the, the clarity, and heaven always comes with clarity. Because God doesn't want you, let's say you're buying a house. Here's how. I remember in this house that we're currently in, going to the Lord. And at that time, before we went, I didn't have the credit. And I'm like, God, he says, go buy a house. And he says, you trust me? Yes, God. And all of a sudden, within a month, my credit went up from just 5.30 to 7 something. And I don't know how, which is incredible. So then I come to this house. I'm like, okay. And he said, make this offer. And I said, Lord, that's really low. Make this offer. And I expected for them to come back and to negotiate. And they said, yes, if you can close in a month. And I went, Lord, I don't even know that I can get the mortgage. I had applied on the previous house that I'd had to refinance my mortgage and they denied me based on my credit. So I didn't even know. So I apply, I'm waiting. And the Lord said, wait. I gave my offer on Saturday. And he said, you will not apply until Tuesday. So I waited. I waited until Tuesday and I applied. On Tuesday, I pulled up my credit report and something changed on it. A whole lot of stuff was removed. I applied and they came back. We will guess gladly more than supply. We can close in the time period. I felt so bad. I went to the people that owned the house and I said, I want to apologize for my offer. And they said, it was a low one, wasn't it? And I said, yes, it was. And they said, but they said, we prayed and God said, take it. So God had a house that believers lived in and they had the right perfect amount for them and told them, take it and bless them. And it was a blessing to me. See, God will go before you and God will set up and give you instruction and insight. In Acts 4.13, now they observed the confidence of Peter and John and understood that they were uneducated and untrained men. They were amazed and began to recognize them as having been with Jesus. Because they took the time and waited and walked with Jesus for those three years, they were different. You are the company you keep. There's a rubbing off. There's a changing, there is a true transforming. You become like the master. You do it the master's way because you see him. See, as you're waiting upon the Lord, looking at the word, you see him doing it and you see how he does it. So when you get the answer, you say, ah, that's how he does it. So these uneducated, untrained men walk with such a confidence and knowing this is how you do it. Well, how do you know? It? Because we waited and saw the master. And it worked. Andrew Murray said, And we want to wait quietly before God in prayer until the deep, restful assurance fills us. It will be given. The meek will he guide in the way. See, in faith we stand that he, because we believe he is, he is the rewarder of those who diligently seek him. We're going to receive that because we come in a humility, and a meekness, knowing that he is greater and we're the lesser and we depend on him, but he will answer. 
On thee do I wait all day, Murray said. The special surrender to divine guidance in our special seasons of prayer must cultivate and be followed up by the habitual looking upwards all the day. See, in this waiting, it changes us. It changes the way we walk, the way we do, so that we become waiters. A good waiter is not somebody that just sits there and takes your order, but they wait on you. If you're in a good restaurant and you see a good waiter, they're attentive, they are watching, and they're already answering before you've asked. They're already there when you need. They're watching you. They're serving you. And they're, you need, for your glass empty, they've refilled it. They're always, can I serve you? And you walk away with an experience that you enjoyed your meal better. That's a waiter. That's a waiter. Murray said, what is needed to help us such a life is just one thing. The real knowledge and faith of God as the only source of wisdom and goodness as I've ever needed. And longing much to be, so let me read this all again. What is needed to help us to such a life is just one thing. The real knowledge and faith of God as the only source of wisdom and goodness as ever ready and long much to be with us as we can, that we can all, I'm going to start this again. I can't read this. So I'm sorry. So listen to this. So let me finish with this. Amen. What is needed to help us to such a life is just one thing. The real knowledge and faith of God as the only source of wisdom and goodness as ever ready and longing much to be to us all that we can possibly require. Yes, this is the one thing. He is everything. He must be our all in all. And that waiting is that demonstration. That waiting is that confirmation. And that waiting is that opportunity. If we realize how great and how good and how above and the inside he has, if it was somebody on the earth and you were given access, would you wait? Would you give the time to somebody in that field of expertise that would dare visit your house? What a thought that you have is undivided attention. Just show me that I could ask my 1,000 questions and get all my answers. Would you show me how you do it? Give me insight. And yet the master says, come, come into the secret place and spend the time. I will show you. I made all things and I will so lift you like I did the disciples to bring you to a higher standard, to bring you to a place where beyond your natural training, beyond your natural education, beyond your natural ability to where it's mine that you can do above and beyond because of him, through him. Oh, I pray that you're blessed and encouraged. And if you are, would you please like, share, subscribe, and hit the, the notification button so you get notifications of our new videos. Check out the series and may it really help you live boldly, effectively for Jesus in this hour. I also encourage you, would you consider joining a prayer partnership program? It costs you nothing because I believe that God will stir in hearts of people to be financial partners and we're so grateful because it takes finances. But I know the importance of prayer partners. And so you can just sign up either as a financial or prayer partner at godsgeneralsandrevivals.com at the partner page. You will receive as a prayer partner the email newsletter. If you want to be a financial partner and you want to receive that, Please sign up as both. Please let us know you want to be on the partner list uh, because otherwise, just financial partners, we appreciate and we send you a letter. Thank you. Uh, but we don't sign you up for the prayer partner program. Um, you have to ask for that. We found that some people, when we assumed that, we assumed wrong. And so we just ask of that. Amen. Well, thank you. Be blessed. Be encouraged. And never forget that this is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it because of, through, and for Him. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.